Hi everyone and thank you Arkinet for uh, hosting me today. It's uh, my pleasure to be here with you and uh, talk about uh, hospitality design. My, my name is Alessia Genova and I'm the managing partner of uh, Tiani Design. Uh, I'm Italian and I'm based in New York. I've been in New York uh, for over 10 years and um, I'm, I'm with Adam Tiani uh, for, uh, I've been working with him for 15 years. Um, so Tiani Design is an um, interior design firm that is specialized in hospitality design. And this is what we are going to talk uh, today. Is a, is a studio that is uh, based in New York, but he has also an outpost in, in Roma. So uh, today I want to talk to you about uh, our bread and butter, which is hospitality design and um, what we define uh, as hospitality design. So for us, hospitality design is um, uh, about creating the experience. And um, the more you know, the less you have to say. So less is simplicity. Simplicity is sophistication. Sophistication is style. Style is culture. Culture is design. And design is more. So we can say that less is more. More connected, more meaningful, and more memorable. These are, um, in essence, uh, for us, the principle of uh, what is hospitality design and what we try to convey uh, every time we work in a, new, in a new project. As I said, create a memorable space is definitely the goal. And uh, what distinguish uh, um, the hospitality design from just being interior design, because memory is more indelible than ink. So, which as um, so far we just I just mentioned that hospitality design is about creating experience and creating memory. So, how experience and memory um, work together, and what we can do uh, to uh, create experience and memory. We say that designer must craft and environments to create the experience that will live forever in memory. So now I want to um, go through some visual and not just like uh, words or philosophy and show you a little bit uh, more about what we we do, what we did in the past. And now we try to create this uh, memory experience. We typically start um, with this trying to capture the attention. So, and, and the example that I'm gonna show you now are mainly like, uh, um, have more focus on, on restaurant design. So uh, when we design a restaurant, uh, we go a bit um, following this, uh, this quote that a restaurant is a fantasy, is a kind of living fantasy in which diners are the most important member of the cast. And you need to remember that uh, when you design a restaurant, you don't design because people go there for, for the food, but they go to a restaurant for the experience. So the first project that uh, I wanna talk to you about and you know, try to bring all these uh, uh, words into actually the reality on in a project is Oriol uh, in, uh, in Las Vegas. Oriol is a, um, is a restaurant that um, probably some of you have seen, uh, is, a, is still existing and open and is it at the Mandala Bay uh, Hotel and Resort. And the first image that you see here is this uh, wine tower, glass and, and still four story high wine tower. Is the way you enter the restaurant. So, uh, you arrive. Uh, uh, you arrive from the from the bridge that you see at the top, and you go uh, down uh, the stairs that are like wrapping the um, the the wine tower, and then you arrive at the at the restaurant. So your arrival moment is already like 
a wow effect is something that is unusual. And this is what we try to create is always the first impression. But what is um, interesting about uh, these restaurants is the story. That is what we want to always tell. So um, basically, when when Adam designed these, uh, these restaurants, uh, it was a big challenge because of the space, the complexity is always like, you know, a challenge to try to figure out how to um, create a great space planning, a great first arrival. And uh, here he had an idea to create basically something that uh, is not just like an architectural feature, but is also um, something spectacular uh, in the way it's operated. So this is the, is the tower where like a wine angel basically um, climb up and down the tower to get your bottle of wine. Oh, sorry. And, uh, and here are some other like shot of, of the interior as well. So um, what we try really to capture with, the, with, this, uh, with this project is not only like, as I said, the, um, the interior itself, like the design, but is really the memory. I think if you, you know, if you are sitting here down on the dining room and you order like a, a, a bottle of wine, and the scene that you see is like of this angel, like going up and down the, the wine tower, you'll definitely remember. So this is like when we say experience and memory and how to create an experience that is memorable. And uh, another example, uh, totally different, but um, you know, has some similarity with the one that we just saw is because of, of where it lives. It um, atmosphere in Dubai or the Bougie, um, and is basically remains still today the uh, higher restaurants in the world. So is the restaurants at the top at the top of the Bougie Khalifa in Dubai. You probably a lot of you have uh, had the opportunity maybe to visit or know, and um, the approach here is completely different because the wow effect is the view. I mean, you are like at the top of the world, uh, you can see the view of the entire city. And uh, how do you create something that it capture anyway the attention in the design um, while everything is projected towards the outside? Plus, we need to remember that, you know, um, not everyone actually, even if you, if you, you know, uh, you probably want to visit this place once you are in Dubai, not everyone are that comfortable with the height and being so close to the window. So how our approach here, it was trying to anticipate some guest attitude and uh, see how we can create something that obviously from an experience standpoint of view um, can be successful. And is, if you see uh, the restaurants and the bar, it developed like in a darker and more cozy way um, on the side that is opposite the window. So we try to create this really intimate feeling with like her banquet that uh, runs all along like a railing. Um, and uh, you look in towards the outside, but you have this choice to be like, you know, a bit more in a comfortable uh, position and cozy and, and enjoy like a, a very warm and nice uh, uh, environment. So, um, what we see here is different than what you had before, because obviously the experience and the memories given by the space is that itself, uh, the view and everything else. But the design also needs to help on, on uh, you know, uh, create something something special. And uh, the choice of the material and you know, it's very difficult to see from this picture because this project uh, is a bit hard to photograph, but it reminds of like almost um, like it's very curvy and, and comfortable. It really helps to create these kind of like cozy environments around you at such a high. Um, but it's important also to not only fulfill expectation, but exceed them. So uh, as I mentioned just a little while ago, there are three responses to a piece of design. Yes, no, and wow. And wow is definitely the one we aim for. So this is our rule of thumbs uh, anytime uh, we approach uh, a new project. And um, here I'm showing you the aviary and the office. I, again, 
uh, I would like you to say wow now when you see this picture. Um, but Avieri is um, basically um, restaurants for drinks. Is the first location uh, of uh, Chef Grand Achat outside Chicago. And uh, it basically uh, wants to be a theatrical um, place to reflect the personality and, and the menu of the chef, which is really a theatrical uh, cocktail. Uh, I don't know if any of you had the experience or the opportunity to, uh, to go at, at these restaurants, but these cocktails are, are very uh, scenographic. I mean, it's basically the things that, you know, it, it take the, um, the, the lead when you are there, it takes all the attention because you really go to see uh, this experimental cocktail that when arrive at your table, they are magical and there is all like a, a ceremony behind. Um, but uh, also the space has to support that. So what we try to in create instead on, in this uh, um, occasion and in this design, is um, something that, as I said, complements the, the chef. And, um, and we, what you see on the right side is basically an open kitchen for, for drinks. Um, and every seat is, again, uh, turns towards the view, which obviously you're overlooking like a Central Park, you are in Manhattan. And then we created this kind of gold metal curtain above the window to just frame this view and create these sinuous like lighting, dancing um, elements in the space. Uh, with the, um, the seating that they have also like a very uh, kind of like individually intimate lighting to try to avoid like the reflection on the window. And again, uh, there are a lot of elements that, you know, when we design, we take in consideration and it's not just uh, decoration or, or uh, um, uh, material is all about like the lighting and the experience. So everything we do, we always try to uh, make sure the experience we have in the place is something that is um, different, memorable, and definitely, uh, you know, remarkable. So here, a couple of shots during the, the day. Um, and then there is a second component to this uh, project with also uh, you know, um, it's totally different and is basically a speakeasy that is attached to the um, uh, to the restaurants, but you don't to the to the La Bar Lounge, but the door is hidden. And um, this was also all an idea that came up uh, while doing the project and discussing with the chef. So he wants it to have like a place that was more like a, uh, a theater, uh, something very special and spectacular where people would go for the view and for, for the experience of the cocktail. But at the same time, you wanted also to have like a corner where people can just enjoy like a um, um, still very sophisticated cocktail, but not with all these uh, um, theatrical aspect around and enjoy a conversation. So we decided to create like a speakeasy. The door at the entrance of these speakeasies is uh, just next to the kitchen. And then you enter and you find basically a, um, a space that is completely different from where you were before, a different era. You're kind of projected in a new completely uh, time. And um, a part of like these uh, uh, design elements, you know, for example, you see this like back window, all of this is now like actually a real window. They are just all design element to create a, a more atmosphere to create like a sense of place being like this completely hidden, um, basically dark room. And here like uh, some more uh, design elements where um, we really create every single detail. We try to recreate uh, a space that was uh, completely non-existing. Um, the selection of the arts and, and every single detail is really studied to create like um, uh, something special and different. But most important is always uh, selling the idea. And uh, we think at Tiani that uh, um, is important. Uh, the presentation is very important. Um, and the, it's basically an art. 
And the way we approach uh, um, every project is very specific and different, but always start with a story. And our story starts with uh, the mood boards. Here I'm showing a series of uh, examples of our mood boards for different projects um, that they have different uh, graphic and style, uh, but they have something in common, which is uh, telling a story and uh, create like a narrative that is not just a selection of uh, nice and pretty images, but really wants to give a sense of uh, the first uh, vision that we have of the space. What is the look and feel? What is the, um, the people, the spirits, the material, the lights? And if you uh, look at them carefully and maybe uh, memorize them, it would be nice to see if uh, when, you, when I show you later some of these uh, projects completed, you can see a, a connection and a relationship in between, uh, in between them. Um, these specifically are mood boards that we create for um, uh, seafood bar and restaurants. Uh, is a project that I'm going to show you later. Is uh, uh, Vernick uh, fish in Philadelphia, and um, the the idea was to create. I mean, obviously, always in collaboration with with the chef. It is to create like a an oyster bar, an open kitchen, all turning around like uh, uh, fish. Uh, but the space should have been a bit more uh, with an industrial look and feel. So we created the first mood board was more architecture and the second one is more to describe, as I said, more of the atmosphere, this idea of uh, uh, communal dining, sharing the fish display, uh, a start of, you know, uh, what vision we have for the color palette, the material and, and things like that more mood board for the same restaurants. Uh, there are different area in, in this case. But, you know, we always uh, try to have uh, people starting to dream about this place and imagine it and feel it and smell it and taste it. And now that I show you one, one type of mood board, I'm going to show you something completely different because uh, this is really what, you know, uh, I think is important to understand that when you design a project, and when you start to tell a story of the project, uh, it's important that you take uh, from the very, very beginning, uh, the way you want to tell your story should be crafted and tailored to the project itself. So even the graphic is important. Even you know um, the, the choice of the format of what you present, it relates to the story. And you know, obviously I don't have, uh, wish I would have more time, but, um, this mood board is, is graphically different. Uh, uh, it wants to convey the same story and idea for a different project. But, you know, the graphic is, for example, in this case, related to the, also the design of the building. And you'll see it on the next one. This in, in the specific was uh, a mood board for a contem contemporary bistro we did in uh, uh, Korea. And uh, these were like uh, for the same restaurant, some other area. So we try to describe, you know, the dining room, the wine room, um, the start to show in some element that are related to furniture design or art. And here I'm jumping to uh, a new, a different project. Uh, so just to show you like a really different, different approach uh, is for our rooftop and nightclub uh, in, uh, that we did in, in Dubai. And again, as I said, we always start with, uh, uh, with, the, with the story showing uh, what we envision as uh, energy, as color, as uh, material. But we collect this image in every time in a different way, but that uh, lead you to imagine this space. If you could see this, the plan, you would see a close relationship. Um, sometimes are more about lifestyle, um, sometimes talk about uh, architectural elements. On the right of this mood board, you see this uh, bowl with a man behind and is actually, if you've been to uh, the Mercury Lounge at the Four Seasons, Jumeirah Beach in Dubai, you'll see and you know that um, there is a bar that has this shape. So, and again, this mood board, it comes at the very beginning, it's just the first idea. So. 
uh, how you try to be creative, create a story and experience, and then make sure that this idea uh, arrive to the end of the project. And here another example, um, I have a couple of more, um, but it's about like a Mediterranean uh, restaurants in Kuwait. And it is much more about, in this case was much more about architecture, the mood board change style. There is a uh, very few images and more of like the architectural elements uh, because these reflect actually the space itself, you know, is, is about the importance of the architecture in this case, and the furniture uh, become less relevant and is more minimal, um, calmer color. Uh, also the choice of material reflect the menu. And then for the, for the chef in this case, the food and the selection, it was very important. So in order to arrive to design these restaurants, we basically almost made a study or, you know, uh, and uh, we developed like these mood boards that are just around the food um, because we wanted to understand, you know, what is the cuisine that is uh, served there. And uh, after we basically collected all these images and uh, we understood that the, the food, it was kind of like, very hearthy, very colorful, very powerful, and it should have been the focus of the place. We decided to go completely um, in a different direction with the design of the restaurants itself, still with organic shape because uh, it is connected to the root of uh, uh, the chef cuisine, but totally calm in color and material selection uh, because the food should have been really the focus. And uh, here is the last example of uh, this process that we, you know, we, we do at the very beginning of every project, which is what we call concept. Um, and is these mood board and images. In, in this case, I also have uh, the after story. So again, this is like for like a diner, a fiber diner at the Four Seasons DFC in Dubai. Uh, is basically, I'm not going to talk about this project uh, in a little bit, but it's basically like their all day dining because uh, it's a 24 hours uh, um, diner um, that lives in the rest, in the hotel. And the idea behind uh, um, is a, is a restaurant uh, operated by chef Michael Mina. And the idea behind here was to create uh, a contemporary 24 hours uh, uh, American style heatery diner. You know, uh, typically like the restaurants, they have like uh, operational hour within the, within the hotel. And here we wanted to do something totally different because open 24 hour, because we started to, um, when we propose something, we always start with understanding where we are. And in this case, we are at the Four Seasons Hotel in Dubai, which is the city where you have flying coming every uh, hours, every minutes, where um, the time is irrelevant uh, uh, in that sense. So, you know, you arrive at the hotel and you might want to eat before your flight at 3 a.m. in the morning or when you just landed at 2 a.m. in the morning. And we wanted to give the opportunity to do so, but in a way and in a space that is also comfortable. So created something different uh, that you haven't seen in a city like Dubai, which is uh, quite hard and difficult. And a space that is comfortable and it can be, um, can live in the morning for breakfast, lunch or dinner. So this was like the idea that we proposed and the chef and the operator and, and the clients all like it. And we went uh, along with it and we carried through, you know, this idea of the American uh, diner that reminds of the glamour time of the fifties with um, also some, uh, um, starting with like some design reference furniture elements and uh, you know the famous Cadillac that you'll understand in a little bit what became. So how we bring the story to life? Well we just make it happen. So this is the entry at the of the diner and this is your diner. So as you can see you know the elements that we show it in that 
mood or style, it becomes uh, like uh, it become easily a project and the vision shouldn't be is not that far. Um, you have the red and white uh, classical uh, leather chair, uh, typical of the era, the lighting that is inspired from the era, the black and white floor, but all revised on a modern uh, way and uh, um, proper for, for Dubai and for the hotel. So here are a couple of shots. Um, these, uh, as always we do in every project, uh, everything is basically custom design and uh, study for the project, including the art. In this case, as I said, we took the idea of the Cadillac, a classical car of the, of the period, and basically we crashed it against the wall uh, and became this art um, done by a New York artist. His name is Bram Tiani. And uh, it did this beautiful, like, custom piece uh, uh, commission for for the project. But content proceed design. Design in the absence of content is not design; is decoration. And probably the project that uh, I'm going to show you now, you would think is just decoration. Is the famous uh, list year 2000. But um, I don't think, uh, my, a lot of you might have seen this picture, but I don't think a lot of you know the story behind this picture. So this is, was one of the first uh, restaurants that Adam designed. And the reason why I'm showing it to you is not necessarily for the decor. Um, I think is a bit uh, aggressive uh, maybe these days. But, um, you know, I'm showing it to you because uh, um, this was basically one of our first projects. And it was the way we started, uh, um, you know, hospitality and the restaurant design business in specific. But the philosophy behind this place is still very um, alive today. So, um, Le Cire 2000 is basically is a restaurant that uh, used to be in the Villar Mansion. It is one of the few um, registered interior landmarks in New York. So when um, the first time uh, Sirio Maccioni, uh, chef and owner uh, of, um, of Le Cirque at the time, uh, decided to open a restaurant, ask Adam if um, what he was thinking about, what he thought about this, uh, this place, that as you can see from the architecture is uh, very important. And Adam was a bit like, uh, not sure about it. He said, I'm not sure if this is the place where you wanna have your restaurants because it's a landmark place and uh, you can do anything with it. You cannot even screw like um, something in the wall and have a, piece of art on the wall. Uh, so basically it will become a museum where people will not enjoy uh, having a dinner there unless we basically treat this one in the Italian way, which means uh, um, create something unexpected and basically he suggested to restore the interior, make it perfect and then he used the metaphor of, of parking like a Ferrari in the middle of the space. Um, so that something that is old, um, it was not perceived that old because there was something very contemporary in the middle. And these contemporary elements in the middle of the space would have not been perceived that modern because of the context. So there was a good tension that would have created something spectacular. And Siri at the time said, go ahead. I like this idea, let's proceed. And um, Adam designed this space. Uh, we never show like a, a drawing or anything. And this is what was the final result. Obviously you understand that it was a different timing. It was as being like one of the most successful, I think restaurants in the world that everyone recognized. And this is not just decoration. This was like a design approach and philosophy uh, obviously, uh, the theme is about a Cirque and, you know, it reflects also the personality of Sirio and there are a lot of like uh, other elements behind, but 
you know, it's not just decoration. And if you can see, like it or not, there are like every single detail is really uh, custom and thought through from the bottom of the chair. Uh, everything's, you know, um, is really steady. So that's why I wanted to uh, I wanted to show you this project. And then, you know, sometimes instead you uh, take a different approach. And you basically, uh, when you deal with the um, chef that are um, very well known as, um, you know, Thomas Keller, Daniel Boulou, or Jean Georges, uh, you need to create a restaurant that is basically their portrait. Uh, a restaurant should be a portrait of its owner. It represents their creativity, their talent, and their brand of hospitality. And here I'm showing, so three examples, completely different, but if you had the chance to, to dine on any of uh, their restaurants or try their cuisine, you can really see that the design reflect the personality. And is it interesting to know that sometimes when uh, we design these restaurants, uh, you know, the chef doesn't really know what he wants. He doesn't really, um, design-wise, he doesn't really know what, uh, you know, uh, what the restaurant should be. Otherwise, he wouldn't hire us. But um, he knows what he wants to do with the restaurant. And um, in the meantime, I'll show you like this. So this is the per se of, of uh, Thomas Keller. Um, he knows uh, what... Uh, what is going to do in that restaurant. And so a lot of time before we start a project, we actually, we're lucky enough that we can have a meeting with the chef and ask them to cook for us. And we observe what is, uh, you know, presenting us, how he's presenting the food to us. And we really try to uh, take this moment as basically our brief to design the restaurants. And here I'm showing Danielle um, his first restaurants in New York um, is uh, basically uh, his main restaurants, flagship uh, restaurants in New York uh, that now is uh, quite old, um, as, as being one of my first uh, projects to work on it. But you see as they're the French, um, French chef, you all know, um, his personality is very different than the previous one from Thomas Keller, which is much more calm. This is very like, he likes color, is much more theatrical, is much more like uh, of uh, entertaining. And this reflects uh, uh, in, in the design as well. And then an example of Jean Georges. Again, this old project, but you know, as uh, we go from something that is more modern, more uh, streamlined to something more colorful, and uh, um, and then something again uh, more like tone on tone, but everything is designed into the detail, like from the floor um, to the the chair. They're all custom. They're all uh, done uh, as a one off for the specific project. And most important sometimes is uh, to be successful and design something uh, different, memorable, that create an experience is uh, have the courage to take on the challenge. And um, when I say take on the challenge, I mean, um, you know, deal with something that is not as easy. The project I'm I'm showing you here is another of our like uh, very uh, iconic project is Amber in uh, New York, at the, uh, in uh, sorry, in Hong Kong at the Mandarin Oriental at Landmark. And this picture that you see here is the first, uh, Amber, the first generation. Um, if you haven't been there, you're not gonna see it like this today. But again, um, here there was like this, uh, element, the ceiling element that it was basically the design feature. There are tons of metal rods um, and there was all like, you know, the story and the design concept behind, uh, but it was definitely what it created is uh, an iconic place. Uh, people love this place and uh, he has a lot of repeated customer and they love to go there. But a um, couple of years ago, chef Richard Ekebus wanted to do something new. He wanted to do something fresh. 
And uh, he said, if we wanted to write a new story, we need to have a clean canvas. So his ways of starting his new chapter and his career with the food and uh, try to, you know, uh, take the maybe the third Michelin star, uh, it was starting clean with the design. So he came back to us and he asked to redesign Amber, which is something very difficult to redesign a place that you already designed and this is such iconic and he has such a strong design element because you never know what to do that can be more impactful than what you did before and that people uh, will like after seeing it and going irregular for 15 years. So here is the redesign of Amber, Amber, what we call Amber 2.0. Um, but yeah, I'm jumping into like, you know, the space planning force, because as I said, uh, when we do redesign or when we do design a space, we don't uh, necessarily, we don't take these as a decorative uh, uh, gesture, a decorative uh, um, approach, but is the experiences, uh, how we do uh, create this experience and always start with the space planning. So this, what you see here is the plan of the original Amber, um, which if you can read an architectural uh, floor plan, you can see that there is like um, uh, the entry, um, which goes to um, the chef table. And then there is a wine room display uh, just uh, up north. There's an entry corridor with a small lounge, another private dining room and the main dining room. Uh, with all these uh, big um, design uh, ceiling elements, but the dining room is basically um, very linear, just banquet against the wall, couple of table in the middle. Um, so when the chef wanted to redesign, and then there is the back of house and and a lot of like um, the back of house kitchen that the connection to the to the kitchen and the service areas and so on. When the chef wanted to redesign this space. Uh, it started with uh, redesigning not only the space, but you know the functionality of the space, what he wanted to do in the space, and he wanted to create a much bigger um, wine experience, having a dedicated one and sake restaurants bar. And he wanted to create. Uh, he found it that in the years people did it, did not love to sit in the middle of the restaurant. They wanted to have more of like um a cocoon in private space so he asked us to create every seat equally um desirable and every seat to be intimate so uh we started with uh, the first things we did is trying started to sketch something on paper this is a bit of uh, more of a final version but you know we adam and i we started to sketch this plan and talk about it and you know i had this um, image of uh the artist richard Serra, which is like you know his majestic architecture but i knew that we couldn't do something like that in the space but what i like about it it was the intimacy that you have when you see one of these exhibitions so i said why don't we create like you know a space plan a floor plan that is Kind of like if it was a Richard Serra garden, we create these sinuous banquet and curve and every space, even in the middle, it becomes uh, very intimate and private, uh, but still being like, you know, allowing the visibility of the entire restaurant to everyone. And, and uh, so we sketch it, um, we sketch it, we sketch it until we came up with something uh, completely different. And this is the new Amber 2.0. And this is the result in terms of design. So uh, the seating, I already described it to you a little bit. Um, and you see how we create this organic, uh, um, organic design, very senior, much more feminine than what it was before. But then we also had to deal with the ceiling. It was a very high ceiling and yet something very, very important there that we had to replace. So we still created like a very important architectural element um, that uh, create like the right atmosphere uh, with the, this uh, custom lighting fixture um, that, that integrated lighting in the ceiling hall to create the atmosphere and the strong architectural elements uh, to support and to uh, this space. 
So because it's very difficult to create intimacy when you when you have like a space that high. And um, and then the design, you see that obviously there were like a lot of creating more feminine space. Um, he decided to uh, don't have tablecloths anymore. So even the the table uh, that now is exposed and uh, um, shown all the time, he has detail that are being studied and designed um, in in uh, in the specific. Um, you know, even the um, the mat, the table mat, is designed is a different shape. Um, so everything again is always studied. Um, into the minimum to the old detail. Um, we have these arts along the, the window because uh, the window is not like a beautiful view outside uh, being surrounded by other office buildings. So we try to create like a moment of, uh, uh, you know, still a pleasant elements, architectural element done by local artists. And then uh, our, you know, uh, expertise and our like uh, um, vision expand uh, to the kitchen where he has a chef table and we help him design, you know, um, some of the elements of, of uh, his kitchen because when he redesigned it, he redesigned the overall. Um, and then there is the second uh, space, which is the Somme. So it's a restaurant and sommelier. And the reason why I'm showing you all, you all these element and, and specific is because I'm trying to tell you what hospitality design is and our story showing you some project because I think is the best way to kind of walk you through what is, is our approach. Um, you see here basically is the first view when you arrive at this place and you just saw a majestic restaurants with like incredible high, um, a specific design but your arrival moment is totally different. And um, there are constraints in architecture that you can't you know, change. In this case was the height. So we decided to use this, uh, let's say obstacle or like, you know, this element that can limit your design to create a stronger design. So we um, recreate with certain elements of a barrel and we interpret uh, into uh, architectural elements on the ceiling um, to create this like uh, very nice and intimate uh, wine bar uh, where the screen are all custom and done by an artist, uh, you know, recalling the wine um, with this shape and the material and the wood and the atmosphere, obviously, and the choice of the color and the leather recall um, is all about wine and winery. And here are some other shots. So the limit on the height, it becomes basically a design feature at this, uh, at this moment. Uh, grow roots. So grow roots means capture the spirit, the DNA of a place or time, and then find a way to move the dial forward. Very important is always to move the dial forward and create something that is exceed the expectation, as I said before. Um, in this case here, I'm gonna show you just a bit more quickly, three other projects, um, very different one from another one. Um, but again, and this is also something that, you know, for us is important for you to understand that every project is different. Uh, this is like a, a brasserie in uh, Beijing at the Mandarin Oriental. And is basically an interpretation, a modern interpretation of actually a steakhouse, not a brasserie, sorry, a Chinese uh, steakhouse, where again, the choice of the material, uh, the design elements, you know, they're all um, related to, to what we wanted to convey and how we can create like a modern Chinese uh, uh, steakhouse. And here instead uh, is the, the Mandarin Oriental in Hyde Park uh, Diner by Aston Blumenthal, which is instead is a modern interpretation of a brasserie this time. And um, uh, there are some design elements here, uh, which uh, they are very important. They were very important for the chef. In this case is this uh, floor to ceiling window where you can see into the kitchen and in specifically into um, um, large scale pulling machine that is uh, been is a basically a rotisserie 
and is a modern interpretation of uh, um, the way of cooking of the 16th century. So the chef, it was very inspired. He does a very modern and very, um, should, let's say, futuristic like type of cuisine and food, but very inspired by the uh, cuisine of the 16th century. He looks at old or receipt and, you know, he reinterpret all of these elements. And this is what we decide to do with our design is trying to go uh, to take the classical elements of, you know, um, uh, British uh, brasserie and reinterpret them in a more modern and clean way as it does with the food. And so here you can see this big machinery that looks like, you know, like as mechanism that look like a watch and then the lighting that basically are ceramic molding, uh, ceramic uh, elements that uh, take inspiration from a cake mold. Um, and then the, this is the private dining room where the ceiling is a modern interpretation of the classical beam ceiling uh, with, uh, you know, a very specific uh, element, design element uh, inspired by, um, certain ambience and, and, and spaces of uh, the 16th century in, in, uh, in, in Britain. And one more is uh, another example of a different approach and different restaurants is Vernick Fish in Philadelphia. And this I'm showing it to you because uh, was one of the first mood board I showed you earlier. So um, you see this graphic that is on top of the bar is actually was uh, I don't know if by chance or because uh, um, when we get into a project, we really try to have our vision for it until the end. It is, was the graphic that we use on the mood boards as a, as a graphic uh, on the background. And, um, and then there are certain like you can only see, I don't have all the picture, but here you can see the open kitchen and you know the tide that we envision, the color, uh, these industrial elements and the palette. But what is most important uh, is uh, control the environments. So the art of hospitality is design, um, the art of hospitality design is in the controllable details, the lighting, the comfort, the sounds, and uh, um, how it's, it's positioned in the flow of movement so you can start telling the story. Uh, we always, uh, um, as I said, we always start with the space planning because it's our way of um, kind of uh, direct the scene and decide how the people should experience this space. And I'm showing here like uh, one uh, jumping from the, the restaurants to hotel. Uh, one of our latest hotel is the Four Seasons in uh, the DFC area of Dubai. It's a boutique hotel, a very challenging uh, hotel for many reasons. First of all, because uh, Dubai is a very is a city where uh, it's difficult to do something new. Uh, everything exists. Everything is bigger and, and bigger. And um, this was the first Four Seasons hotel, um, a boutique hotel, is in the financial area and is surrounded by mainly like office building. And this was an office building. So we had to convert uh, this uh, office building to a boutique hotel. And um, as I said, we had a lot of planning behind and then, you know, we jump into design and we try to create something um, very tailored, very custom. Every element here is custom design is told through. Um, the colors and, you know, the detail and the polishness yes, it takes in consideration the fact that we are in Dubai. And if you see certain elements as the big tassel at the end, it's kind of like an hour interpretation of taking some classical elements uh, of the rabbit culture and reinterpreting in a modern way to create something different, unexpected, more fresh and modern. And then, you know, um, also um, creating something again uh, that it can becomes like a architectural elements when you don't have the space to create like a proper pool and you have only a rooftop to uh, create like an outdoor pool but at the end of the day we create something that has been very successful and uh, is um, very pleasant uh, to live, to experience, and also design-wise, a bit different. 
and then the spa also here um, just to show you how uh, every really every de detail um, is uh, custom and, and thought through the design is scary um, with the same philosophy from the lobby to the presidential suite and the public space public area this is like uh, the cigar uh, lounge and bar at the at the top level and this is like the luna bar um where just to again uh, tell you just some hint of this when we create the design and vision of a space we always try to have a story on inspiration um the ceiling as you can see the lighting is um uh, could look just a decoration, but it's not just a decoration. The inspiration here was uh, from the um, wing of the falcon, which obviously is an animal that has uh, a lot of meaning for uh, the culture and for the um, for this for the place. And so, we took this image and we reinterpret and we created something that you know is not that uh, obvious, but he has uh, a story and the meaning that obviously. Um, we always tell at the beginning uh, when we create our our design and our vision. And then some other shot of the outdoor where you can benefit of the uh, most ambitious view in Dubai. And here is still part of the project are basically um, some images of the black and white art uh, that uh, uh, we have through the space and through the corridor. If you remember, here is where I show you the Cadillac cars crashing to the wall done by an artist that he also create this piece of art. Um, I'm not sure you understand if I what it is if I don't tell you. Or maybe you think that these are like building, existing building. You don't know if they are futuristic building. Uh, in the reality, these are basically a combination of picture of uh, existing building in Dubai, photographed in black and white and recomposed to create uh, a new vision. So, and this is another example. So as I said, uh, our vision and our story, um, which tell it really not only with the space, but with everything that gets into the space because this is part of the experience and this is something that you remember if you know this and, and you had the chance that someone explained to you or you read the story behind and is how the experience uh, remain memorable. But also you need to make it personal. Uh, you need to make it personal because every space, every project has a story and uh, and he has a different uh, um, guest and client. And uh, hospitality is not to change people, but is offer, but to offer them a space where change can take place. And this is uh, one of um, the last project I'm showing you. I have this one and another one, uh, which are, uh, we consider hospitality project, even if this one is a luxury uh, residential, because the way uh, is designed, it is the same approach, is um, the same personal experience that you want to live every time you enter in your home. Um, this is Victoria Place, is in Honolulu, Hawaii, and this is a luxury condominium, we design it uh, um, in the entire in his entireness, uh, we design all the public space and the modern room. And as I said, um, for us, the first, the important is uh, that you uh, get this memory and experience from the very beginning, so from your arrival. So here you can see um, how we created at the arrival with your car. We created like an architectural feature and elemental and elements that. Um, is important uh, um, for your like um, welcoming experience. Uh, this project was also very interesting because there was a lot of uh, collaboration with the architect because he has a lot of indoor, outdoor. And as you can see, the approach and the style is very different than what you see before in, uh, in, the, in, in the project I show you. Um, 
The reason is because it's in a different place. It's designed for a specific clientele, which is mainly uh, Asian and Japanese, and is in Hawaii. So um, that cannot be something that you find uh, somewhere else. And here again, this is the lobby uh, where we designed this uh, uh, ceiling and custom chandelier. And then some shot of uh, you know the model room uh, is located in a prime location in, in Hawaii. We designed like a custom kitchen, custom bathroom. And um, as I said, all the public space. So this is your like arrival lobby, uh, the floor where you have a spa. Um, so it is, uh, even if it is a residential uh, building, it basically um, leaves uh, like the, the idea of like a hotel, a resort, because that is the experience that we want to create is uh, we want that people want to live here. So they uh, want to buy an apartment here because they get something they don't get in another building. We try to create some amenities that you don't find in another building. And uh, we try to use the public space to create something you cannot have in your own apartments. So you can rent a cabana, your private cabana with your friends and having like a private pool, or you can enjoy just, you know, the, 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 the main pool and having your own uh, smaller cabana and uh, day bed. As basically as if you are like in a resort, but be in your home. So surprise and delight is what we try to do. And it is the unexpected that stand out, that leave us with a sense of great discovery. And this is the last project uh, that uh, I'm sharing with you today, uh, which is part of, uh, you know, our, um, expertise and uh, it follows on what is hospitality design is a uh, cruise ship board. Um, we design luxury cruise and we design uh, uh, Seaborn, um, which is uh, one of the uh, most luxurious like cruise ship and in the world. And um, it's a small, it's a small cruise ship with not many cabins. So it could be, could be considered like as a luxury hat. And this is what we uh, wanted to do. We wanted to create a luxury yacht experience because uh, we know the experience of a church, but the design is not. And it's difficult to see like, you know, a cruise ship that has the yacht element. Uh, so, and that was our, our approach and our idea. And um, also creating, but with the space that you have in a, is a small cruise, which is different than the yacht. We also wanted to create always the wow moment, the wow effect. Uh, this is the big main staircase, all uh, in glass with like, you know, this uh, um, glass sculpture at the bottom visible from the very top or when you are down uh, taking the reflection of the surrounding. And here are like some of the public space, the, um, the, the lounge where you can just go to, uh, read a book, asking information, but all, as you see, all the architectural elements, uh, they are remindful of uh, some of the architectural elements you find in a yacht. It would be been interesting here to show you the mood board because uh, they look almost as picture in the way that our vision was so clear uh, that uh, create the final product was not that difficult. Although the cruise ship is a totally different uh, um, project is even if it's like a hotel on at sea is basically creates a lot of uh, a lot of challenge because he has you have to um, deliver all the components that we just mentioned before and uh, with the additional challenge of the logistic regulation you know imagine nothing can move all the table are fixed on the floor um so you can move them around so you need to make sure that when you're planning um you do something that works because after you can move it the only things can move is uh, the chair but not the banquet not the table not the bar stool uh, not the chandelier and these are some shot of uh, the outdoor and the, the very spectacular view of uh, 
this cruise, but always hand on a high note. Design create culture, culture shape value, value determine the future. And for us, um, this is uh, the how I want to close what we do is always try to create uh, something that um, is not out there yet. Uh, we had the opportunity to design the first design museum on a cruise ship. And this was uh, not because they asked us to do it, because we wanted to do it and we proposed it to do it. So uh, Tiani Design, Adam Tiani is also the uh, creative director of uh, Costa Cruise Ship. And uh, here we design our little design museum uh, about uh, uh, Italian design. So the people on the cruise ship can get their moments of uh, culture and not only um, entertainment, which we are very proud of. So to close this chapter, and uh, I hope uh, I, I, I entertain you like uh, without make you falling asleep, but how to design for a memory. Anticipate, fulfill, and exceed expectation. Find emotional connection. Surprise and delight. And on a night note, great hospitality, hospitality leaves a lasting impression. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you can keep the presentation if you like. Uh, we already have a few questions. Um, so I will I will go with them uh, straight away. So we had the first question that we had from Dr. Lama about sustainability strategies, taking and design, especially regarding materials, lighting, etc. What are these measures, let's say these factors that have been taken in your designs, especially that you had a couple of projects in different countries? Well, um, first, thank you for your question. Um, I, I didn't mention, probably didn't mention all the presentation uh, sustainability, but uh, it's definitely something that basically uh, we, we take in consideration all the time. I think that these days sustainability is basically something that you always need to incorporate. In, you have to incorporate in your design to be respectful of your design. And sustainability, um, in our opinion, is not only you know, the selection of certain material, which have always happened and you try to be uh, more green and sustainable, um, but is also about uh, being sustainable is also about trying to use, you know, the local, not only local material, but the local um, artist, the local uh, uh, artisan. So try to uh, stay local when we do a project is uh, something that is for us is very important and we consider an important aspect of uh, sustainability in a project. Uh, a part of the rest, you know, there are like also some coding and regulation that, you know, you're asked more and more to take in consideration, but uh, uh, playing local is what is important for, um, not only for the community, but it would make sense and what creates uh, um, for a project, it creates the right personality uh, because what the local people can bring into uh, the craftsmanship of things and, and uh, every design element, you can't recreate it, you can't fake it. Okay, so that takes us to another question from Loai about co cooperation with engineers regarding indoor climate, such as integrating daylight and thermal acoustic, etc. So, I, again, because different countries like Dubai and Hong Kong and New York, with the, the climate changes actually. So, how how did you need to change some of your designs, ideas according to these uh, to their technical decisions? Well, that is uh, the challenging part of our job. You know, uh, we uh, we do collaborate with all the consultants uh, from the very beginning, and as you said, um, because we have to 
we have to do so because you know every project and every country has specific rules so the most important thing is typically we present our idea our vision and then when uh, this is uh, about to come to fruition we sit down with every consultant and we listen and we learn what you know what we can do what they have to suggest and is a is a collaboration where we try every time to 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 do the right things so the flexibility of you know understanding what you need to do and change and uh, understanding when you have to do it i think is uh, is important but you know is it is about collaboration and being flexible and and having the knowledge and the experience of uh, that we do this in every project so um it's part of again is really part of the process uh, for us yeah. So uh, there's another question from Shireen. The question is about, uh, I will summarize it. It's uh, how old is the hospitality design as to understand the life cycle of an idea till it's completely consumed visually and functionally? This goes back to the, the project that you had to redesign it actually after 15 years. Well, that that is, um, you know, um, we always try to create something that we say is timeless. The reason why we want we do that is because, uh, uh, you know, first of all, uh, when you design a project, you need to be very respectful of uh, your clients and not thinking that things after a year or two can change. And when I say timeless is on the vision and the design, uh, so is, we are not designing something that is trendy. We're not trying to design something that is copied by whatever is happening at the time because it's easier than what you have and everyone likes but we always try to design something that is right for our clients and um, most um, specifically we also try we design all the time something that is functional something that is uh, uh, good to maintain easy to maintain because that are the things that uh, our clients look after and we need to respect like the light, the cycle of a project, it can be, you know, in that case, we, for example, after basically 15 years, 10, yeah, almost 15 years, he wanted to redo it because the chef felt it needs like a refresh, but per se is, um, has been also again, 10 years. The refresh I think is often happening after 10 years because the people wants to make sure that, you know, um, you want you want to see a bit of a refresh not all the time is necessarily like a redo as happen in numbers sometimes it's more like a, um a refresh and sometimes yeah. that is the time to be courage and, and redo it so it depends so last question you mentioned a couple of times that a couple of projects their owners actually the chefs themselves right so yeah. How, how how important working with the owner as a chef and what big difference has it once it's that not the owner is not the chef actually well i think that you know not all the time the owner is the chef or maybe the chef is 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 very little, few time maybe i use the word owner mistakenly but the chef um when he, he has an independent restaurant uh, is be, I, we call it the client because even if he has invested, mm. we have to follow his vision. It's a bit different when you know the chef is working in in a hotel or like when there is an operator or when uh, um, there is already someone else involved, which uh, I think is um, you know is is a bit more challenging because when you design a restaurant and you don't uh, deal with the chef directly or or the chef come on board later. If he has a different vision and doesn't feel the space is for him, it could be a bit more more challenging. But typically, the chef are are involved at the beginning. But otherwise, you know, we follow the same philosophy, try to understand what the restaurants want to be. And the Italian restaurants, the Japanese restaurants, we definitely need to know this major brief. And then uh, we work with, if he's an operator, we know the standard. So we know we work with their standard. If he's a private client, we try to see what he wants because at the end of the day, what he wants is what he is going to look for into the chef. Well, that was our last question. And uh, we really enjoyed the presentation and the inspiration behind each project.
Thank you so much for your time and thank you everyone for, for attending. Um, it's been a pleasure to be with, uh, with you. And um, again, if you have any, any further question that uh, you want to ask even later, I'm available anytime. Thank you a lot. Take care. Thank you. Grazie. Grazie.